Hello and thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Bike here. Today we're going to be looking at an RDA that I was using in yesterday's Mech Mod review, um, but I've had been using it quite a lot and I'm really, really enjoying it. I really, really am. This is the Mini Buddha V2, which uh, which we'll see. Well, well, we'll see it when we go in the up close. But uh, yeah, it looks gorgeous on the. It looks gorgeous on the 1111 mod right here. Um, but no, I think this is a really nice kind of move forward for the Mini Buddha uh, that we had previously. And I'll tell you a little bit more once we've done an up close and personal around the Mini Buddha V2. Come on then. Alrighty then, so this is the packaging that the Buddha does come into. Now you can see that we have got very little information going around on the back there. However, there is some info underneath there that you can stop and pause on if you do want to have a little bit of a read. But uh, no, poking into this bad boy, once we open it up, you'll see that we do have the uh, read before using products manual, much like we've seen with the mech. And there we go. This is the, as I say, the copper version, but you get so many bits and bobs with this. This is great. So in here we've got a screwdriver o-rings and some extra post screws um, here we have the atomizer itself which we'll come to momentarily uh, here we have a separate barrel if you wish to use this one and here we have a separate type of drip tip if you wish to use this one so let's have a little look and see what these are all about so this barrel here this if I zoom in a little bit more actually you can see that this barrel here it has just got these massive great big wide air slots which is great and it means that you can actually pop this um, uh, drip tip in here if I just lube this up actually first. So I have popped a little bit of a lube, a little bit of VG over the top of here. Now this is one of the problems I did have with this particular cap, that these two O-rings just seem to be a little bit on the loose side for this Dell ring cap. So it meant that when I was popping it in there, um, they can kind of sort of squish in and squish around and have a bit of a, a tough time fitting. So uh, the best way I've found of getting around that is by reducing this to only having just the one O-ring. And that way it tends to hold itself in there nice and comfortably anyway so uh, it's still not going to go anywhere We're, but um, but uh, yeah it just does make its use a little bit easier in my opinion but once we got down to one o-ring you can give that a little bit of a screw in and away you go and like I say that is holding in there nice and snugly now obviously you just turn that and you can see that that airflow there is about half and half there and I can close it off all the way. So yeah, that definitely works. And obviously this will work on the other cap as well. And talking about the other cap, if we look at uh, at it in this kind of format, just like this, I have given it a quick clean. Uh, I could do a little bit more to be honest with you, but uh, this, I will show you how I do this at the end of the video if you're interested. But, uh, but no, otherwise, apart from that, keeping this together fairly simply, once again, same sort of top cap going on there. Um, but you do have this uh, big old chunky Ultim top cap on that one. Uh, the holes on the top, you can tell that the Delrind is a much wider bore as well. So if you're into your big wide bores, this one might tick the box for you. But uh, but no, otherwise this drip tip does not come off. It, it's, it's stuck in there. That's doing nothing then. Now, the only thing underside there, I would love to have seen these to have a curved section on the underside here, sort of so a domed out section here, because I think that really would have really helps with flavor a little bit more but uh, I'll talk about flavor a little bit later on but now as far as the uh, as far as the two barrels go this one is super simple as well in the kind of Buddha airflow that we're used to in the past so you can either go for your kind of your modern big old Cyclops jobby or you can go for your uh, for your kind of many many holes and this does give you a really really smooth airflow I've got to say now then when it comes to the deck itself crazy crazy deep juice well on this one absolutely bonkers a nice square post for your positive in the middle there um, which is uh, is not going anywhere it's got a square inset uh, into the deck itself your two negatives are on the outside there and there um, which means because of this design which I think is pretty darn funky um, this clamp will clamp onto your positive and your negatives will go into this lead so you can still do your velocity style builds um, going into this pretty simply the 510 underneath is protruding greatly as you would expect and uh, and so yeah it's a doddle to build on it's nice and safe for hybrids uh, heat treated screws going on up the top there and uh, yeah jobs are good so let's worry about getting a build in here shall we I will be using a couple of these AW coils from Adam Wood There 
there you have it that's the coils installed a little bit of space either side and plenty of space for underneath in that deck for a fuck ton of juice right let's get the wicking in tickle the wick boom and we are in a little bit of strandiness going around on the outside but i'll live with that one um i'm going to be using this particular airflow today because i like it a lot and we'll just stick that over there lining up the airflow holes to where i want them to be and boom built and ready to vape so that was the tour and the build in the Mini Buddha V2. If you want to see how I go about cleaning this, I'll leave that to the end of the video. But uh, let's have a little look at the details first. In fact, let's have a little vape first, shall we? gobs of airflow gobs of clouds and uh, it does just do a grand job so essentially what we're looking at is with this kind of uh, multi-hole uh, airflow that hits to the sort of the original mini buddha but we have seen it on a few other mods but it does mean that it is a super smooth airflow now if i take that cap off and pop the other cap on Let's have a little go on this one. I think this is going back to the, uh, the the original Buddha, Fat Buddha, I think it was, with this kind of airflow, but let's have a little toot with that one. Both of which do do, do 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 a grand grand job. Personally, I like the uh, the one with the many many holes just because, especially once you kind of close that down a little bit, you can really kind of get the air really hitting all around the coil whereas with the sort of the cyclops style airflow it's kind of a nice width to it but you are making sure that you build a little bit higher um but with this one i think you can build kind of fairly central like i did when i showed you this in the up close and still get airflow coming up underneath it that with that uh, to me is uh, is the best way it works now the one thing i would have liked to have seen on this is maybe some kind of staggered airflow up option on the airflow control Controlling. So you can then kind of highlight whether you want the air to come in just at the bottom or just at the top, something along those lines. I really would have liked to have seen that rather than just straight up and down. Um, but having said that, like I say, you can close these down. I've really enjoyed having this around the, uh, the sort of the three air holes. Make sure I've got these bad boys lined up. Three air holes um, kind of each side. So you've got, well, I say three, three wide. So you've got nine air holes all in. That to me gives me a little bit of restriction and it gives me that kind of really kind of nice focus on the flavor as well as the clouds. And it does work very, very well indeed. Now then, so let's look at the details it's a 24 mil on the uh, base and the top obviously it does kind of narrow in a little bit in the waist there which complements a number of the sort of style of mech mods that we're seeing these days so i think that looks pretty cool now then when it comes to the airflow i think you've got loads of it and uh, i think that's really really handy now like i said i do like the uh, the the multi-hole sort of version of it just because i think i can get a little bit of a better flavor coming from that than you can with this one but if you've got a nice wide build maybe you're using it on a stacked mod or something like that then this certainly helps you be able to get that air hitting the whole width of the coil which works brilliantly obviously you can do this do that with this one but you are opening up more airflow because you've got all three line line lines are lines of the airflow coming through so yeah for me i prefer this particular one with a multi-hull uh, when i've got a regular coil but series build sure go for this one and i think you'll be pretty happy Happy with that to be honest with you as for uh, things that I think that could be developed on this a little bit more like I said I'd like to see that air flow have the option of being sliced down um, uh, or at least having the sort of the top level the top kind of row of holes and be able to be cut off um, and then you can kind of introduce the lower ones do you know what I mean so that way it's focusing the air underneath as well as the middle of the coil but uh, that's only a personal preference um, as far as that goes 
is there anything else that I can think about? I really like the uh, the central clamp system because the bolt or the screw that goes in there does mean it actually disperses your uh, your juice out either side on the coil really, really nicely. So I do like that. I think that's a, a nice little kind of, I don't know whether it's something that was factored in in its design or whether it's something that has just kind of, is, is a happy coincidence. But it does mean that popping your coils in, I've had no problems getting any of the coils in. The nice big wide head on the top of that clamp means that it makes sure that you're getting equal pressure going on both sides and it really does push down on those coil legs. So I've had no problems with any of the chunky builds that I've been putting on there. So all in all, I think it's great. Obviously you've got 810 goon style compatible drip tips on the top if you want it. Um, and I think that's about all I can say other than the price. Now looking at the vaporscloud.co.uk website, all the links will be down below. It's uh, 42 99 currently, although it is out of stock. Uh, so I'm sure a bit of Google food will be able to bring one of these bad boys up in whichever country you're in. Obviously go and check the Vapors Cloud websites. I think they have multiple ones depending on where they have warehouses or whatever. But uh, no, th go and check them out because I think it's, it's a really nicely made made RDA. A couple of things that could be done a little bit better, um, but uh, and that would be the O-rings. The O-rings are a little bit wobbly and not wobbly in as much as going to fall off. That's not going to happen, but wobbly just when you're getting that cap in. Um, but uh, but the, the, the O-rings actually on the base, I think, do a grand job. Um, I love, I love that. Oh no, I'm on the things I want to develop. Um, and that airflow. And that's it. For me, that's it. Otherwise, I think it's an absolute corker of an RDA. And a seven mil juice well is just ridiculous. I think that's, that. I mean, it's so, so deep. It's, it, you can put, you saw how much cotton I put in here. You can put a crap ton of cotton in here if you really, really want to. All in all, it's a winner for me. I'm really enjoying this setup as a whole. I think it looks awesome. But this RDA, you do have to take care of it. It's copper at the end of the day. So you do have to clean it. You do have to keep on top of it. If you're using anything, any type of, of copper cleaner, then please make sure that you do um, thoroughly wash it to get any film off or any crap from the cleaner that's left on there as well before use. Um, and also take out your O-rings. Alrighty then, so here is the Buddha in its fully patinaed state, and this is what it will go to with regular use, um, but uh, unless you keep on top of it. So I'm just going to show you how I quickly go around cleaning this. Very, very similar to the Mech mod, to be honest with you. It's just a couple of stages to be aware of. Now, first off, I have removed the build from in there, so there's no build in there, and just given it a very, very quick rinse. Uh, now then, I'm going to take the drip tip out, and I'm also going to remove this O-ring that's on the inside inside of here. That just stops this getting kind of any nasty chemicals on it or absorbing anything from the uh, from the polishing experience. So once I've done that, uh, I have closed off the airflow there to try and reduce some of the crap that's going to go in there. And uh, then what we can do is get our mod maker uh, little attachment. This little puppy here goes onto the uh, the shaft that goes into the drill. And then your 510 screws into there like so. So now we'll bang this in the drill and we'll give it a damn good polishing. Using this Torque Town stuff again, same as I used for the mech, and let's get into it. Alrighty, so that is the outside pretty much done, and that's the uh, that's going to be the easy bit. Now, obviously, you do have to make sure that you do wash this out. Now, I can do a little bit more finishing on here just to really shine it up lovely and get in that Buddha sign and all that sort of stuff. But uh, I'll get in this gap a little bit more, but I'm going to leave the patina actually inside the lettering because I think that'll help it stand out. But uh, now it gets to the challenge of what do you do to the get inside this barrel? You'll see that there's all kinds of muck and rubbish and what have you in there, and you do need to get into that as well. So what I'm going to do is take the uh, airflow control ring out like so. Then I'm going to get just a square of, uh, of microfiber cloth and you can see that there's a divot in there already and that's because what I'll do is I will get that divot actually inside the jaws of the, uh, of the drill. 
Once that uh, microfiber cloth is in the jaws of the drill nice and securely, then what I tend to do, and people can do, you know, you can do whatever you like, but what I'm going to do is I am going to pour a bunch of this cream in there, give it a slight work around with the finger, who misses, and then now all I've got to do is I've got to try and keep that in one hand and feed this in with the hand as well. So as you're spinning the drill slowly, your hand actually makes this into a little cylinder so it allows you to be able to get this on there easier. And we're starting to make progress on those insides already. So I'll just repeat that once or twice just to try and get those really cleaned up. And then when it comes to getting inside the edges for this, what I'll tend to use is I'll just use a little cotton bud. I find that that's the easiest way just to be able to get in there to really kind of get those corners sorted out. But you can certainly kind of guide your microfiber cloth into the end of that if you so wish. But before I do any of that, I will take out these O-rings. But uh, that's how I go around cleaning this up now let's get back to the review shall we that's about it so thank you very much for watching i've been dean the vaping biker i'll leave my little subscription thing here make sure you hit the bell and a couple of videos there and there as well but in the meantime have it large